back, R33 Skyline, episode two. Firstly, I need to apologize for not one, but two stupid mistakes on my part. So because of my legs and my health, I'm sort of in and out doing these projects and I film them and film bits as I go. I recently sold my old iPhone, which is my camera phone which has all my clips that I never delete. All my video clips, keep them on there, never delete them. Second stupid mistake, I sold my old MacBook. All right. When I sold my old MacBook, I had about five half-made YouTube videos. Gone. Didn't save them, didn't transfer them. What a bell end. <sighs> so, because most of the clips are on the old phone, camera phone, which are sold, they're all gone. The laptop with the clips on it as well, gone. So I will admit I am missing a lot of clips because a lot of stuff has been done. I will talk you through what has been done in the missing clips and I think I do have a few maybe small clips or pictures that I can add in to show how bad it was before we got to where we are now. So. Let's just have a quick recap. In the last video, we left off from the engine bay. We've done everything in the engine bay. Anything that needs doing, structural, rust, even a slight bit of crust has been done. Mainly, obviously, the strut tops and all the main work into that. So, the engine bay is done. Um, it's in cheap primer because the whole car is going to be shop blasted prior to being painted. So, engine bay done. Last video. Since the last video, we started on the passenger side sills. So front to back, all cut out, brand new panels put in. So the end cap was savable. We're not going to replicate that with hours and hours and hours of work. So that was saved. New inner and outer sills all the way along. Front and back. Look at that. Perfect, perfect still. Looks absolutely stunning. There was some crust and some mess under here around this area. I might have a picture that I can throw in there quickly for you now. And obviously underneath here, it's all been um, primed, waxed. Every lap joint has got this special copper spray on it. That is good for another 70 odd years, as long as it doesn't get damaged, crushed, and let the rust in. That brings us to the rear wheel arch. Now, I cut an inch out of this arch years ago to fit over fenders and be a hot boy drifter. Fucking big mistake. Never, I can't get new rear quarters, steel rear quarters. I just can't get them. So we're going to have to run over fenders for the rest of our life now, which isn't a massive shame because it will look cool as fuck, but it's lost that bit of um, OEM, originality, do you know what I mean? So we have fixed my stupid mistake some years ago and we've cut out half the wheel arch. So this line here, all of this was cut out all the way along and now it's uh we could call it boy well, we could essentially say it's half tubbed because we've cut old wheel arch out and we've just flat paneled it um the rest of it all factory absolutely fine as i said it's getting shot blasted so all the under seal will come off and it'll all be redone um i mean considering how bad that was that i'm absolutely amazed that is just stunning. Um, bit of work redone under here as well. This was very crusty. Also, I think I've mentioned it before, probably in the clips that are deleted, but this subframe snap stud had actually snapped. So that's all been cut out, returned, refixed, and put back in. So that is the passenger side fabrication, rust treatment wise, absolutely fine. Now, I think I might have one or two clips. The condition of inside these arches was amazing. Honestly, when we cut all this bad stuff out from my bad work years and years and years ago, you could see all in here behind all this. Not one piece of rust. 
it was all perfectly nice paintwork. I couldn't have been more happy. So that was all primed up on the inside. Now it's all sealed up. Obviously, once the car's ready for paint, it'll have a full underbody, wax oil treatment, the works. It'll be the nicest underbody you've ever seen, and it'll all be sealed in. So, yeah, as I said, passenger side is now done. And just like that, the passenger side has been cut open. Hello, Jerry. <laughs> Christ, things are moving pretty quick. I missed that bit. My, um... Me and my fabricator help me out while I'm not here, sort of do shifts. <laughs> so he's here when I'm not, I'm here when he's not. So last you just saw, this side was cut open. Um, you could see there was a bit of crust there. You can't see it no more. But this goes, this is a good example to show how we've redone every part of this car. So we cut out the old bits. We treat any bad metal inside or we replace it. I mean, my guy can even do... See these dimple dies? Factory dimple dies. Let's go over to the RX-8. Factory dimple dies. That's for my steering rack holder for the drift car. But, that just an explanation to say, he can recreate anything. So, bad metal treated, replaced, whatever. Then primed and sealed. And then every joint, lap joint, should we call them, has this copper spray. Now, not many people do this, or it's like a thing, but anyone that knows Steve Richardson, I believe, at SR Auto Bodies, probably the best guy in the world at Restoring Skylines, it's from him, he uses it, this is how he does it, so I don't wanna hear no shit, basically. Um, so, where are we, yeah. Old stuff cut out, bad metal treated, primed, sealed, new panel in. Um, the end cap, like the other side, is replaceable, um, saveable. I mean, there, oh, it's there, look. Is that? What does that go on there? I think it was something like that. Yeah, something like that. Primed on the inside, ready to be sealed on. Um, the wheels need to be treated, but obviously, let's just put in there. They come in two pieces, these seals, front to back. So you've got one piece, two piece, second piece down there, primed up, ready. We're gonna put it back over this, measure it up, and then we're gonna take this out and put some new, put a new bit of seal in there for that to seal too nicely. And then on the rear, because I might not have been able to find the clips to show you, this is what I did to the wheel arch, and this is why it's the actual rear quarter is unsavable and I can't get a full rear quarter. So, years ago, when I had no idea what I was doing, didn't really care about the car, I cut the outside skin off, folded the inside skin over, and then just fucking welded it. Welded it all over, tr try and seal it, and then undersealed the shit out of it. Um, so what we've done on the other side, if you can see this black line, we cut that line out. So we cut all the bad shit that i done out. All the way around there, as you can see. And then this side isn't actually that bad. But on the other side, essentially what we've done is we've cut out this factory bit that you can see is deteriorating a little bit, mainly because of my cutting and welding. The problem is this time it's got the fuel cap and the fuel neck and the fuel filler, but I will be running a fuel cell in the boot when this is done, so that will be gone. So we'll be sealing up that, keep the fuel cap, but it'll be directed into the boot rather than down here. So I'm going to strip this back because there's also loads of dents in there from when I filled the gap between the over fender and the car with expanding foam and then if you lent on it, it would obviously dent into the car. So I'm gonna strip all the paint back, we'll get this back to bare metal, so that the fabricator can then cut this out and replicate exactly what he's done on the other side. So, I think I should shut up talking and do more working.
this is one of my favorite parts about doing fabrication. When you get to tidy up at the end and you get the airline. Ah, so this is how far I got today because this doesn't take minutes, more like hours. Going from the bottom to the crease line and then here from the bottom up to the crease line. We're only doing this so we can start pulling out any major dents and stuff like that rather than using filler. Um, we know there isn't any major ones, but until we get the paint off and stuff like that, we don't know how many dimples are underneath. So yeah, that's it for that bit for me today. I'm not gonna film any more of it. Um, next up, we'll put these two pieces back on before we cut the rear arch. Um, oh, also in the midst of losing footage in laptops and phones, I've had the windscreen removed and the rear screen removed obviously at some point this is going to get painted properly and shop blasted before so i will remove these myself but yeah so we're getting there considering i lost a lot of footage i am very sorry but i will try and make up for it we are nearly there with the repairs of like fabrication work once the seals and that arch is done there's a few tiny bits in the boot and then that is it that is it all right I'll see you when we're next doing this. We're getting there, we're getting there. Same as the other side. End cap back on, main seal, back seal. Cut the rear arch out. Again, fuck all rust in there. Considering how bad I mutilated it, but that is great news. So, we'll band this section up. And then it's onto the few little spots in the boot. Loving it. So... Basically, uh, we're going to redo this front clip. We've done it from the turrets back. But when I built this years ago, I hacked up the front for intercoolers. This bit here was crumpled before I actually owned the car. But I've had a storage shed for about the last five years, which I've actually had to give up recently. and had to empty it all. There's loads of stuff in there. But I bought this years and years and years ago in case I ever had a front end collision. I'd keep the car, keep it away from insurance and redo it. But I don't plan on doing that once this is built. So we are gonna unpick this front clip because it is all straight, perfect. It's all nice and it's just better than what's on there. Um, so this video I'll probably keep rolling until all of the welding on this car is done and then it's back on some stands from there it will be painting and underseeding i suppose but let's get that welding that side done first shall we back once again like the renegade master they used to say so well you can sort of see we're um halfway through banding the rear arch now seal's done just needs like a few tidy up spots um but I need to show you some work. This is neat work. I'm loving this. So let me spin you around. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Right then. So as I mentioned, same as the other side, tub the rear, the rear arch. This arch is a bit different because of the fuel cap. You've got the filler neck that comes down and through, down through there to the tank. I'll be running a fuel cell in the boot of this car. So that is no longer needed taking it completely off but it does bring some problems with the shape of the arch the other side was just plain and simple bandit i don't know if you can see this whole plate has been out to put in shaped perfectly to go in i'm trying to spin you around plates all along here there's another one needs to go in there but the next thing, which is going to divide opinions, is we're going to weld that in so it will never be seen. So there'll be no fuel filling cap on either side of the car. 
I'll have to open the boot to fill my fuel cell. Bearing in mind, this is going to be like a Sunday driver in the summer when it's done. That does not bother me at all. So, a fair few more hours on this wheel arch, then the boot, then the front, welding done. But yeah, there's still, still some work to be done. Now, I also feel like I need to address the issue of you don't see anything done on this car. You just see me go, oh, and now this is done and we're going to do this. Oh, that's done and we're going to do this. The reason for that is All Roots Fabrication that does all the welding on this car for me because I'm not a professional welder. I've not got years of experience. It would be stupid to have a go on a car like this. He's put in uh, uh, well over 200 hours. I'm going to say well over 200 hours into this car so far. But he's a family man. He works. He's got his own life to get on with. So the deal is he has his own keys to my workshop. We agree on a set amount of hours a week that I can afford or he can have time to give me. And we basically work away from each other. So I'll come up and do prep work. He'll come up another time, most of the time when I'm not here, I'm at home with the family, and he'll do his bit. <clears throat> Works brilliantly, but that's unfortunately why you don't see much action on the car. Um, the episodes after this, obviously, you will see a lot more, a lot more in depth. But I, I'm not going to film over 200 hours of welding for you to see. But I do get a few people ask, why don't we see it? So that's why you don't see it. I pay him a weekly sort of allowance wage or whatever we agree on. He comes in, does it in his own time. I'm more than happy. The work's fucking sick. I would never go anywhere else. So I'll come back to you once more has been magically done. We've got it flipped over so I can uh, show you a bit more what I mean now. So this is obviously the side with the, or that did have the fuel filler cap. Obviously that was the hole into the tank that we blocked off. This is that rear arch that we've like half tubbed and tried to keep sort of original. All around the back as well, look. All meets nice, all shaped perfect. That must have been a nightmare for him. But yeah, one little piece left over here. And then we are. Uh, we're gonna shot blast the hole underneath before we start trying to weld patches up like this and stuff like that. We'll just shot blast the whole thing, expose stuff like that. And then yeah, bit more welding on the boot and that's that done. Cut the front clip off that one. Put it back on the front there. There may be a new car. This video might be out before this one. I don't know yet, but yep, yeah, there's another new car. Yeah, keep you updated. Get this, uh welding finished in this video hopefully i now have a shot blaster donated by a friend i've got the big old compressor over there to run it but the problem is shot blasting doesn't always take off this rubbery under seal it will take the paint off and it will take rust off but it pretty much bounces back off all this thick black stuff so i'm gonna have to i'm gonna do the boot first grind all of it off and then if I need to shot blast the boot, we will going forward. But yeah, uh, I'll come back to you when I've done that rather than stick you on another time lapse. Right, I went over the boot with a wire brush, as I said I would, and that's how it come out. We got the shot blaster, gonna hook it all up, see what I can get done today. It won't take off these bits of underseer, we'll need to grind that back first, but just wanna give it a proper test and see what we can get done. And then I'll probably leave it till we get back to welding because this video is getting pretty long and none of you are going to watch the whole thing either. <clears throat> right then, recap. As you can see, I had a go at shot blasting. Problem with the shot blaster was it was old and used and second hand. It kept blocking up. Turns out it was rusting away from the inside. Kept blocking up with flakes of metal. Tried cleaning it out and it just keeps blocking up. Managed to get quite a bit done. As you can see, all the gray is the shot blasted. All of that is what I have wire wheeled. I still need to get into these little pockets. 
but like the main bits are done that will come off easy with a y wheel that red but yeah a majority of the underneath this stuff still needs to come off but i'll do that with a wire wheel but yeah anyway because of such it was such a fiasco with the shop blaster i've now decided to go to the top and work my way down until the whole car is bare metal so started off here around the windscreen for example i've done the pillars i've done the top of the pillar down the sides i'm sure I need to do in there but what i've started doing is i played with some old paint thinners i had lying around to see if i could uh hurry the job up a bit so you can see it's peeling up there i put some in this recess because it's hard to get in there the grinder and that's coming off as well still got all the back end to do but there has been some more weldings the fabrication fairy has been back so i had a spare front end clip Basically, this headlight. This headlight piece was a bit crumpled around there. Not from me, but must have been previous before me. So we cut that out. Put another one back in. No crumples. Looks absolutely fucking gorgeous. And while we were there at the front end, we used another cut to fill in that that had been cut for an intercooler pipe but not very nice so that is actually the same factory bit that was cut out of my car just cut out of another car and put back in and then there was another one here for a boost pipe intercooler pipe sorry as i said we've just welded that back in and we'll make it nice and neat when we redo it so more welding more paint stripping We'll carry on I, this video is all over the place but i wanted to get all welding done in one video and like it's a bare shell it's fucking there's not much left to do so this video ends when the welding finishes but saying that once that's done at the front we've got a lot of shit to sort out in the boot um old patches need to be cut out that needs to be cut out to be fair that is probably the worst rust that was on the whole car and it's a patch in the boot that's been repaired before. Yeah, the old battery tray needs to come out like custom made years ago. I'm leaving the inside, all right? I think I've said this before. There is nothing on the inside that needs doing, nothing. Now it's gonna have a full interior in it, so you're never gonna see this paint anyway. So rather than spend another 200 hours on the inside to paint it for no one to ever see it, I'll probably just redo the sound deadening. My torch is on its way off. Yeah, just redo the sound deadening and um, put all the interior back in. Because uh, she's mint in here. So we will keep pushing and we will keep plodding on. And just like that. I mean, you go back 30 seconds in the video and you see what these two pieces look like. I mean... It needs a few finishing touches on the body shot, but you wouldn't even know that that was ever gone. Or that bit. You wouldn't even know that was ever swapped. Like, you would never have a clue. Luckily, because we've used original, original parts. But yeah, I think that is cool as hell, that is. Like, from what it goes to to what it looks like. Right, I'm going to carry on paint stripping. I missed the fabrication fairy again. But he's been here and marked out some spots. He's put that bit in. Now... We got no forms or presses or anything like this here. And from sheet metal, he's managed to recreate this ridge, that dimple, like all the way around. That's crazy. Like, how has he done that by hand? I do not get it. Yeah, anyway, next patch. Two more patches to come out. I grinded all the paint off the roof. Now I'm pretty sure I just need to finish off inside the window trims uh, and the window seal, whatever. Take this bit off, the bulkhead paint off. And then it's just the last bit of paint at the rear and inside the boot. And um, yeah, she's bare metal and fully welded up. So here is the under seal kit from SR Auto Bodies. 
I just can't believe how, com like, literally, I don't think there's anything you don't need. So, I've only had a quick look at what we'd say, rust converter, start with a rust converter. Um, I don't know if it's primer first or stone chip, but yeah, anyway, so you get rust converter, brushable seam sealer, masking tape, brushes, scotch pads, gloves, brush cleaner, uh, stone, high build stone chip, primer, enamel coloured paint, uh, more quick dry and stone chip, the gun for coating it all. Yeah, like, no, I can't wait to dive in. We are ready. So, we are gonna finish this video on some good news. All the welding on the skyline is now finished. Let me say, this video has been filmed over like the space of a year. I've had operations, I've had a baby, I've got married, I've had a honeymoon. Um, yeah, but <laughs> there is hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of welding gone into that skyline shell over the year. I'm glad it's done now, because that is probably the most major fabrication bodywork. Um, the next episode is going to be bodywork, so that'll be the underneath, making it fucking awesome, seam sealer, primer, cavity filler, the works, and then I will have a go at block priming the car before I send it off to a paint shop. But that will all be the next video. But we're also going to end this video with the engine in the boot of my car, which means it's going somewhere, which I'm hoping to do this maybe in the third episode. Is this, the third? Is this the second episode? Right, so next episode is going to be bodywork. The episode after is going to be when I get this back. Like, to be fair, I've just pulled this out from under its cover. I haven't even seen it in like two years. There was nothing wrong with this when I took it out. I stripped the car off because I actually blew my diff, my gearbox, I can't remember. But um, we're not gonna forge it because I don't need it. We're just gonna refresh everything. So new, absolutely everything, OEM plus, and just get a healthy 500 brake horsepower out of it. But yeah, that'll be another episode. Next episode, bodywork, welding is now finished.